What's going on, fellas? In this video, we're gonna overclock this air compressor. You can see here, we're starting off with a four and a half inch pulley on the drive side there. That gives us 95 PSI's at eight cubic foot per minute, or 99 PSI, I'm sorry. And what we're gonna do is open this flow gauge to full tilt, which is above 10 cubic foot per minute, and we come up with 60 PSI's. So now what we've got here is a six and a half inch pulley and that should drastically increase the power input and RPM into this compressor. So we're gonna see what that does. We'll start off on full tilt with the um, flow rate valve open all the way. It definitely has a struggle to it. We're gonna have to increase the throttle here so let's take a screwdriver to this throttle. Yeah, I don't like that. We're gonna give this thing a couple of turns here and uh, get it vibrating pretty bad. That's one of the reasons why the throttle is set at the condition you get it at from the store is because it'll start walking away. It starts vibrating so badly. So we are definitely overclocked big time. We've also added a high flow air filter which makes a huge difference in itself. Uh, you can now see we are running up into the, looks like 85 PSI's and fully open. So we should get a 25% increase there. This thing is doing very well. We were at 60 PSI's with the four and a half inch pulley. So if you divide 60 by 80, that's 27.5. That means we're 25% increase in air pressure. Now the flow rates may be some type of like parabolic equation. It may not be linear. So to say we got a 25% increase in flow rate could be wrong. It could go the other direction. But uh, let's turn this thing down to eight cubic foot per minute and see what the PSI is on this setting. I believe we were at 99 PSI's previously. Now with a two and a half inch, or a two inch increase in pulley size, we are running at, uh, 135 PSI's, the compressor is actually able to shut down. That means we've hit 135 PSI's. So, definitely got an increase there. Will this thing last? Time will tell. Time will definitely tell. But, it's worth it. I'm not gonna be running this thing at these pressures, so I may end up reducing the pressure. But that's definitely a pretty good increase there. So it was not a waste of time to do this. I didn't spend hardly any money. Man, this thing is really throwing some air out. Look at that. And that's a huge opening. So what I may do is reduce the max pressure of this thing. You can do that by backing out this pressure screw here. I don't need 135 PSI's and it's very hard on this thing. It certainly doesn't like the sound. It almost looks like my compressor's out of kilter there with the motor. The motor's off whack or something. You can feel the struggle. <laughs> I can tell you that. This compressor is screaming, dude. Uh, definitely, uh, I would not advise this. I don't want to be responsible for blowing up your air compressor, but I'm going for it. I'm going to leave this on here and we'll use the date of this video to determine how long this lasts. I use this thing quite a bit. We definitely got to increase in airflow. Like I said, I think just changing to that 40 mesh screen air filter alone gave me a huge increase in pressure. If you put your hand up to that intake, it'll darn near rip your hand off. So there's a huge amount of air going into that thing. And like I said, because we're only working with at most five to 10 PSI's of actual input pressure, atmospheric pressure, because there's no way we're getting 100% vacuum behind this. If we were, we would have 14.5 PSI's of air pressure blowing into the system. And I'm doing this to try to get some more air into this foundry here. We've got three burners. And this thing is hungry for air. It did okay with just the way it was, but um, 
I want to try to get this thing up to 2600 degrees, maybe even 2800 to melt actual steel. Okay, so here's the air filter that was on there. And I can tell you right now by the amount of suction I felt on that intake that this was in itself inhibiting the performance of the air compressor. Because there's one thing we got to remember about intake systems. Anytime you have vacuum involved, the maximum air pressure that you're going to get of an intake system without forced air is 14.5 PSI's. And that's only if you've got 100% vacuum behind this intake. So that's not a lot of air pressure to work with. So anything we can do to improve the intake size, the geometry, is going to improve the performance of that pump. I'm half tempted to put it back on there and see if the numbers do actually show that, but I don't have time. So there you go, fellas. So far, so good. But remember, you got to pay to play. I also wanted to point something out about these air gauges that a lot of people don't know. Anytime you're using one of these air gauges and you want to actually monitor the airflow in an air system, this back vent must vent to atmospheric pressure. If it does not, you have to not only know the atmospheric pressure and the air temperature of the area you're doing the testing, but you have to use a special mathematical formula to determine the actual flow rate based on the back pressure in the line. If we had a hose hooked up to this and it was connected to say an air tool and then we tried to run numbers to see how much cubic foot we're running through this, we would get a false figure without doing the mathematics to show the actual flow rate under 60 PSI of pressure. So typically when I'm running this on a waste oil burner, it will show I'm using six cubic foot per minute, but that's at 75 PSI. So at atmospheric pressure, the actual volume of air we're, we're pumping is far larger than that. But because it's compressed, the packets of air being measured are smaller. So I've seen a couple of videos of guys hooking this up to their air tool and then complaining that their compressor wasn't giving the rated value. But you could see clearly that we were right around 8 to 9 cubic foot per minute at around 90 PSI on this thing. And that's what it's rated at. So as long as the vent, the very back of this, is vented to atmospheric pressure and you can't have a long hose on it or nothing it's pretty much got to be a direct vent if you do have the hose you got to do the math and like i said you need to know the air temperature and the atmospheric pressure of the area that you're doing the equation so there you go fellas so far so good but remember you got to pay to play and this thing may not live that long we could blow a piston rod on the compressor or the engine anytime you can feel that thing struggling it does not sound right but nonetheless we're going to run it till the wheels fall off. 